Eve, how are you? Good, thanks. Yourself? Well, I can't hear you now, but uh, I'm hoping you can hear me. So I'll just start by asking um, how how is the fitness of the players, and particularly, I suppose, Kieran Tierney, is he going to be able to play tomorrow? Everybody fit and available, including Kieran. So that's got to be good news for you. It's good news for Kieran. It's good news for us. It's good news for for the Scottish supporters. So hopefully we can back all that up with a good result. So do you now know with that news? You now know the team you're going to put out tomorrow tomorrow yes. evening. Of course, yes. Thank you all. We will go to Carrie Brown. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Um, that's a big decision on Kieran. How much do you think you'll be able to feature from the start? How much has he been able to do before the match? He's trained fully the last two days. Uh, so he's available for the whole game. And there was a lot of, uh, I think, conversation around your team selections ahead of after this match, which was a bit of a surprise considering it's your first time back in a major tournament for under such anticipation. But you're quite used to this siege mentality. Do you perform at your best, get your team performing at their best under that? It's not really about a siege mentality. It's, it's about having a balanced and fair reflection on a, on a game of football. Uh, I'm not sure we got that after the game the other night, but that game's in the past and we look forward to the next game against very tough opponents in England. Thank you, Carrie. Now go to Alex Howell, please. Hi, Steve. Hi, Alex. Um, a couple of the England players said they're already looking forward to this game. It, it will be the top three uh, games they'll play in their career. Have you had to speak to your players about them getting overexcited or looking forward to this game too much? No, not really. We've got good professionals in the squad. They're used to playing in big matches. Big players want to play in big games. And they don't come, they don't come much bigger than this one. And uh, just with the result in the first game, does it add pressure or take pressure off of you going into the game? No, the objective when we started the tournament was to get enough points to get out of the group stage into the knockout stage for the first time in, in our history, as the, the men's in our history. And we still have that in front of us, so we look to get something out of the game against England and obviously we have to get something out of the game against Croatia as well. So we look forward to the next two games. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie Borthwick, STV. Hi, Steve. Hi, Jamie. The players have talked about their self-belief going into this game and their belief that they can go and get a result. How important is that mindset going to be tomorrow night? No, the players have to believe in themselves. That's the, that's the first criteria. They're obviously, that's the all playing at a really good level. Uh, a lot of them are teammates with the, some of the lads in the England squad as well, so used to seeing them on the pitch, used to seeing each other playing big games, so I, I, I wouldn't think that self-belief to go there and believe they can get a good result. And you talked about uh, composure in front of goal as being something that needed to be improved from the Czech game. How can you go about trying to change that in, a, in the space of a fairly short turnaround? You just do a little bit of work on the on the training pitch. You, you hope that when the chances come, they're clean chances. It's normally easier to score a clean chance than than maybe half a chance. Uh, Czech Republic, to be to give them credit, I think they blocked about ten out the the nineteen shots the other night. So that's that's good defending as well. We try to get clean chances in the game, and hopefully we get enough chances to stick one away, and hopefully one one's enough to get us something out of the game. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you. Alison Conroy, Radio Clyde, please. Steve, the Scotland fans are already down here in fine voice and full of confidence for the players. Is this the kind of game that you don't really need to do a team talk? They know 
what, what the magnitude of this and, and, and the fans' expectation and performance? Well, it's a game, obviously, with a lot of historical significance. Uh, it's a game that the players all want to play in. What we have to do is make sure that we're prepared properly for it. In terms of team talk, the team talk really is, is to go through the, the tactical side of the game, the organisational side of the game. The actual, the actual nuts and bolts of getting, getting the players up for the match is, is, is going to be really easy because we know it's a big game, we know we need to get something from the game and that's what we aim to do. Thank you, Alison. Last few questions, please. Let's go to David Tanner of TalkSport. Oh. David, you're on mute. Can you unmute yourself? I can't do that for you here. Let's see if David can revisit and unmute himself. Any final questions? We'll give David a chance to Get back on. There we go. Theo Squires, Liverpool Echo. Hi, Steve. Hi. Uh, in the first round of fixtures, Andy Robertson created six chances. It was the most of any individual player in this first round of fixtures. With England having a slightly makeshift defence so far with uh, Harry Maguire a fitness out, how important is uh, Andy Robertson going to be to your chances in this game? I'm not sure the English boys would like you calling their defence makeshift. Uh, four quality players in the last game that, that I saw playing against Croatia. And he's always a key player for us. He's our captain for a reason. Uh, the work we get down the left hand side is, is good for the team. If we can create six, if Andy can create another six chances for us tomorrow night, then hopefully we'll, we'll stick one of them away. Thank you, Theo. Thank you. Al Lament getting greedy. Al Lament, BBC Scotland. Trying to do Tanner a favour, really. Um, but, Steve, if I may, um, you'll have obviously watched the, the England game from Sunday and they, they started the game very well, came out all guns blazing and should have probably been up. I guess you will expect a similar start from them and how do you hope to, to try and contain that and, and impose your own authority on the game? Well, we, ho we hope to start just as quick as England do. We'll go out there, we'll try and get on the front foot as early as possible, we'll try and get a hold of the ball, we'll try and make the, the players will try and make themselves feel comfortable on the pitch, on the stage, and if we can get off to a quick start, that'll be good for us. Thank you, Al. Kieran Canning, AFP. Hi Steve. Hi. Uh, Billy Gilmore and, and Nathan Patterson, two players that haven't started a, a senior international before. Um, would you still consider them throwing them in from the start, given the, the enormity of this game, or would their inexperience at this level be counting against them and, and be look, looking at them from the bench rather than, than starting? Well, first of all, I'm not going to give you any more team news. I gave you Kieran Tierney is, is fit to play, so both Nathan and, and Billy are good good young players, good Good. They're going to be a big part of the Scotland squad going forward, the Scotland team going forward. David Turnbull as well has come into the the squad as well. Uh, the all, all three of the, the young boys that are put into the squad have acquitted themselves really well and deserve their place in the squad. Thanks, Kieran. Thanks. Final two. Let's go to Dan King of the Sun. Dan King. Oh, um... Given you spent so much of your playing career and your coaching career in England, can you just talk a bit about how much this game means to you personally and what kind of emotions you take into it? I take the emotions of the, the head coach of Scotland. Proud to be the head coach of Scotland. Uh, proud to lead this group of players. And hopefully they can make us all smile at the end of the game. Uh, I've spent a long part of my, my life in England, never mind my my football playing and coaching career, so good memories down here, lots of lots of good friends. Uh, but on the night, 
I want Scotland to win desperately. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Final question, Carrie Brown. I'm just, I'm just helping David Tanner. I hope he gets his sound back. Oh, that's tough for him. Um, Steve, I'm going to ask you about your relationship with Gareth Southgate, having coached so long in England and, and working with St George's Park. What kind of relationship do you have and what do you make of what he's achieved so far coming into this job and when few really gave him the chance to get a team to a World Cup semi-final and now very much established and respected in the role? I think Gareth's done a great job with the with the England team. Like you say, he took them to the last four in the the last World Cup. It's it's not an easy thing to do. He's got a terrific squad of players. He's he's, he's taken that squad of players. He's developed. He's brought a lot of young, exciting talent through into the squad. So he, he's done a great job. I know, I know Gareth well from the the circuit, if you like. When you're going around, you're watching matches. We we bumped into each other quite a lot before the the COVID restrictions hit. So. I've got a lot of respect for Gareth. He's a he's a really good he's a really good person, and always nice to bump into him and speak to him. And hopefully we can have a nice chat tomorrow. We won't talk to each other very much for the 95 or the 96 minutes of the game, but afterwards hopefully we can have another chat.